Hello, this is for day 175 of Bible in One Year, our Bible text, Job chapter 1 to 2, and then Acts chapter 7, verses 22 to 43. So let's begin with the prayer. Lord, we thank you for another day that you've given us. Um, thank you, Lord, for your guidance through all the trials. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom. Um, thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, for, for salvation, and for providing our needs, for keeping us safe, healthy. For protecting us and thank you lord for being with us every day and we pray lord that you would enlighten us as we read your word help us to understand them and for us to apply them in our daily lives also lord we ask for forgiveness for our sins our mistakes our shortcomings help us lord to overcome them and you know for us to become better as christians to be more efficient and more faithful to your word and lord we pray for the salvation of all of our loved ones I uh, pray, Lord, that you would touch their hearts and allow them to understand your messages, your words, so they could accept you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, um, pray for the uh, people who are laboring or doing their work in the ministry, our pastors, the many missionaries, the church workers in different you know, places, the Bible school teachers and the Bible school students. And Pray, Lord, that you would provide for their needs and that you would uh, keep them safe and keep them healthy. Protect them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You should pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, Job chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Oz. His name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil is true evil and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters his substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east and his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and pulled for their for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God, feared God and is true with evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, That Job fear God for naught. Has not so made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabines fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep. And the servant and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three, hand, three bands, and fell upon our camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are, they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Jacob arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. 
The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all, in all this, Jacob, uh, sorry, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Job chapter two. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and is true evil, and still he holdeth holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man had will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job, with sore boils from the sole of his foot and to his crown. And it took him a patchard to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain, retain thy integrity? First God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Elaphas the Tamanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Sephar the Naamathite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. And they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and not spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Okay, we now go to Acts chapter 7 and read verses 22 to 43. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came to his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him, and avenged him that was oppressed, and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Will thou kill me as thou didst Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at his saying, and was stranger, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begot two sons, and when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is all the ground. I have seen I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and I come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, and in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. To whom our fathers would not obey, but trust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. 
saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as for this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Rephim, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Alright, we're done with uh, Bible reading, so for reflection, something to share. So, Job chapter 1 to 2, so it is to be noted, uh, God is, uh, sorry, Job has been blessed. He has a lot of, you know, properties, he has sons and daughters. Life is good, right? And he's worshiping God. And um, Satan, you know, came to ask God, you know, for permission. Eh, oh, no. I think God is, in a way, proud of what Job has become, and so he, what do you call that, not really boasted, but in a way, he, you know, uh, specified Job when Satan came and said that, have you considered my servant Job? Okay. And so Satan said something like, um, that's only because, you know, you are blessing him, he has everything that he needs and he wants, if you... Uh, remove all these things and he would curse you. Uh, it's or something like that, right? And so the Lord, uh, God allowed Satan to take away all the possessions of Job. And so in the first part, we see servants coming to tell him that um, the sheep or the sheep are gone, the camels are gone, the oxen are gone. And then lastly, your children are gone, right? And so Job... Um, you know, he mourned, but uh, he didn't curse God, right? He was mourning for the loss of, you know, everything, but he kept his faith and he remained faithful in the Lord. And then in chapter 2, we see, uh, you know, again, um, God is proud that Job did not curse him and he remained faithful. Uh, but um, Satan asked, na, asked that, you know, Maybe if, you know, he's suffering from diseases or something, um, even though he lost everything, he's still, you know, living comfortably, he's healthy, uh, he's alive, and, you know, essentially that's really all that matters, right? So we should be thankful if we're alive and healthy and protected, right? And so um, the Lord God, you know, allowed Satan to, uh, what do you call that? to inflict certain pain or suffering to Jacob, but of course, uh, he rem uh, commanded him not to take his life, right? So in chapter 2, we see Job uh, getting boils from, you know, all over his body. And of course, that's very uncomfortable. If you've ever had, uh, you know, boils, rushes, just skin rushes are highly uncomfortable and, you know, maddening almost. And so he was suffering like that, and so he sat on the ground with the ashes. And Job, uh, after a while, his wife came to tell him. Uh, in a way, she was also asking, or she also expected him to, I you know, curse God because of the situation that they are in. But Job uh, rebuked her and um, remained faithful. Right? He he still praised God. He's still thankful for God, and he did not. Uh, cursed him or did not question him. And then at the latter part of chapter 2, we see his friends coming over. And I think the first part of that is really good because during the first seven days, they did not say anything. They simply accompanied Job, right? And that's, I believe that's what they should have done. But of course, in the coming chapters, we'll see them um, rebuking Job. Uh, for things that he did not do, which is kind of irritating, right? They should have just remained silent. Okay, so I think those are the messages that I've you know taken away uh, from the passages. All right, and then of course in Acts chapter seven, um, we see Stephen uh, again recalling uh, the in a way history, especially Moses, uh, the life of Moses back in Egypt. Okay.
so there's a rehash there all right okay so i will end it here so this is for day 175 a bible in one year and we've read job chapter one to two and then acts chapter seven verses 22 to 43 thank you and god bless